Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna push the limits of Node.js and see if a Node.js server can handle 1 million concurrent requests. Yes, you are here, right? We're gonna just like push the limits of Node.js and we're gonna have like a simple basic Node.js yet to an advanced Node.js server that does handling from like a basic HTML file to like database and registering users and logging in and, and even to the Fibonacci. And we're gonna test it all, put it into the stress test. We're gonna use this HTTP stress testing tools to test the HTTP benchmark and test the server and how does it do with concurrent requests. It's gonna go through like from a thousand users to 10K to uh, even a million, which is of course ridiculous. One million re like concurrent requests is a quite big number, but we're still gonna be testing all of that and we're gonna see it how it does throughout the video. Of course, we're gonna go through like first, what is an event loop and how does Node.js works behind this is just a brief one a brief explanation of going through of this. Uh, we're gonna use something like AutoCAN in here, which is a pretty good um, like HTTP benchmarking tool, which does stress HTTP really well and it provides a really awesome API. And of course, we're gonna be testing this really awesome API in here with login register. Uh, there is some payment API, Fibonacci in here, and see how it does behind the scenes. So we're gonna even create custom benchmarking scripts in here using the auto key I'm gonna create it automatically or pretty much programmatically and see how that does behind the scenes. I'm gonna push the limits of our Node.js server and we're gonna even run this on a real world server running on a tool core processor almost like five gigahertz and running with a two gigabytes of RAM on a hosting provider in here. I got it with, and it's completely dedicated virtual private server in here for me. I'm gonna just like push to the limits, I'm gonna test it as well on this private server and see how Node.js does with this much of overloaded request and much of overloaded uh, concurrent requests and see how Node.js can handle all of that with this single threaded event loop. So hope you guys enjoy this, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started and actually start by understanding how Node.js works. But before jumping anywhere further, I wanna just make a quick disclaimer for you guys before jumping into the video. So for this is actually a full disclaimer, is actually do not try to benchmark or run the upcoming benchmark we're gonna learn throughout the video on your production ready server. This is gonna just like break the server, make things go wrong, DDoS your server, just crash it or something. There's a lot of possibilities that this, this thing could go wrong if you try to run it on a production. Do not do that and only run this on a development only environment and test your benchmarks on a development only environment. You can run it on your I don't know, new server that has some developments and do some benchmarking there and here, but do not run it on a live production server because it's a bad idea and it can go wrong. It has 99% this could go wrong. So just a quick disclaimer for you guys. Now, if we jump back into our topic for today and how can we see or how can we benchmark um, Node.js kind of like servers in general, Node.js expert servers in that kind of kind of like criteria. And before jumping anywhere further in this, how if we can like see how if Node.js can handle 10K concurrent requests or 1 million concurrent requests even per second, well, is that even possible? But before jumping anywhere near that, we need to first understand how Node.js works and how does it operate behind the scenes in the lowest levels. So Node.js for some of you, and probably a lot of you already knows that Node.js is single threaded. Yes, it runs on a single thread. And it's actually, if you've been hearing this like sentence for ages now, whatever you find Node.js, it is a single threaded non IO blocking and it's an event driven. So this is an ugly sentence. Yes, I do hate this sentence, but I still have to say it. But what does that mean is basically Node.js runs in a single threaded and it has this kind of like events paradigms to run Node.js code on, on an events basis. That's why you see Node.js and callbacks works really well together in a really, really like versatile uh, kind of like coding style or coding approach. So this is basically what Node.js is. Now, if you see like Take a look in the screen here. There is this kind of like website. This is actually a really awesome website that explains how the events loop, like the Node.js's event loop works. And it's explained by one guy that I do really love. Uh, he has like some video on YouTube explaining all that kind of like rubbishness in here. But I'm just gonna go briefly on how that actually operates. Now, if you take a look on this 
like right left side sorry uh, there is actually this this code that's gonna be running so this code already does there's some jQuery it has on so whenever we click on the button we're gonna have it like some set timeout and after two seconds we're gonna just like console log you click the button simple then we're gonna have console log high this is basically it's gonna run first because you know this is uh, this is an event it has some set timeout and it's only gonna be running after the button is clicked and the next thing in here uh, there is actually the set timeout. So the set timeout is another one. After five seconds, we're going to say, hey, click the button, please. And another one. This is going to run next. After we run this code, it's going to be like, welcome to the loop. And so you here, there's actually different boxes. So what does the, these boxes mean anyway? So this is the call stack. And if you're not familiar with the call stack, it's pretty much what's actually on the stack. If, you, if you're familiar with a stack data structure, it's actually like, um, it has like something like first in, last out. So whatever comes first, uh, it gets out last. So this is basically what it is for, for a stack in here, just to, to make it in a basic way. So the stack in here is actually the call stack. Like we push functions inside of that stack and those functions gets called one by another. So we're gonna push a couple of functions, that, which means all the functions are gonna be like running upcoming next on this stack. There is a callback queue in here, which is just a queue for holding all the callbacks that needs to be run in afterwards. And there is this web APIs. And this basically is kind of like a stack. Another word stack holds everything from a web APIs from like set timeout, it holds callbacks, it holds like this jQuery kind of callbacks and all that sort of stuff. Now let's go ahead and run this code to see how it basically works. So whenever we run this, we're gonna have this uh, button callback register, we're gonna have some set timeout. The timeout is gonna run because we got this first timeout running. It's gonna run, it's gonna do a callback, it's gonna like do a console log, and that's it. So it's gonna run all of those. I know that's been, that, that's gone really, really quickly. But if you're trying it again, we got this, we got the console log high, we get the set timeout, and we got welcome to the loop, which is this one. The timeout now is running two in two seconds. We get another callback, then we get this is called. Now here, as clearly see, there's actually this kind of callback register and it waits for the button to be clicked. Now if you go in here, click the button, as clearly see there's a on, on callback queue, it runs, the timer runs here for another callback, it gets on the callback queue, then eventually it runs. So whenever you click that, you see they click a lot, there is tons of them gets registered in the callback queue, and the queue just basically tries to run one after the other. And this is what the event loop is, because it's single threaded, it can run on the single event per time, and if you say, oh, that's bad, that's really not, because it all works really well together uh, with this single threaded thing in an event loop. So it always checks if there's like any callbacks needs to like um, kind of like aggregate and, and call. If there is, yes, it's just gonna go ahead and do all of this. And it's curious in here, it takes quite some, some time because we have like two seconds just to see how that actually works. But if you were to run them on a normal processor, a decent one, of course, it, those they're gonna be probably taking mi microseconds to show up and like run all of that. So that's basically how the event loop works. I really encourage you, everyone, to use this website here, uh, like latentflip.com, I think, and just go ahead and play around with this. You can input whatever code in here, so you can you can edit the code, and it's still gonna be running uh, perfectly from this side, and you can still see it, how it operates on this call stack, web APIs, the, the callback queue, and all the sort of stuff uh, from here or there. So that's, that's a pretty good approach on how to see that working. Now, the second thing that we're gonna be actually benchmarking is actually, as I said before, is an Express Node.js server. And I already got one in here. It actually builds as a simple authentication server. All it does has a basic API. It has some register API, a login API, some authentication API to do some like payments, which we're probably not gonna be used for benchmarking. And there's some Fibonacci kind of like calculation, which is pretty bad to have it on a server. I mean, Yes, it is doable, but the way we implemented it right here is actually kind of like time intensive and it's not being done right. So this one should be handled in a separate thread while we are running it on the main thread. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later on once we come through this and benchmark it. So this is actually basically what we got for this particular server. It's a pretty simple server. It's a pretty basic API running up on Express.js. So let's go ahead and try to run this API in here real quickly. So all I'm gonna do, npm run, and I'm gonna do run start to start the production. You can start the development in here, which I don't really care about, I just need the production. As clear as in here, we also have a database connected to this, and this is actually running alongside MySQL database, which is on the local host, of course, and the MySQL database in here is actually connected successfully. We got the date and time, like we got 
just a simple query executing here to see how all of that kind of like working. Now, the tool we're going to be using to benchmark the HTTP is called AutoCanon. So the AutoCanon in here, what it does, it basically does some HTTP stress testing. If you're familiar with stress testers or benchmarkers, like, I don't know, if you're a gamer, you know, Geekbench or Cinemabench or whatever, like, that sort. This is like this is an oral cannon, and it's specifically made for benchmarking and stress testing HTTP, and more specifically to work with HTTP, but more specifically HTTP 1.1, which is widely used nowadays uh, for like the HTTP protocol. So this is the, the pretty much the common version, and it has other supports for different versions as well. So it's a pretty good tool. It offers the command line like a CLI usage. And as well, it's gonna offer a programmatic approach. So you can install this as a regular Node.js NPM kind of package and then you can use it normally as a function and all of that sort of stuff. We're gonna be using both approaches to benchmark. First one with the CLI, just running a couple of like commands, benchmarking here and there. Then I'm gonna jump into the real world to just like go ahead and run that from the benchmark. So if you take a look on the website or pretty much the server, if you go to um, pretty much the actual homepage, you're gonna get this really ugly home page which is an HTML page that has says hold on it has some lorem ipsum uh, kind of like ugly text going on behind the scenes right there so so that's basically what we got for the home page and this is this is just like for testing and benchmarking as I said before and there is actually underneath another API for doing registration and this registration goes through uh, database and it checks if users already registered or not and it throws some errors and it saves the user plenty of stuff going on and there is also a login going on behind the scenes as well and this is what it's doing it basically goes like oh i want to go ahead and log in that user i check with his email check the password and log in back and generate a json web token which is like a token for authenticating him and we return it back so that's what's going on in here just like wanted you guys to take a look on what the server has and how does it look like behind the scenes now for the main one which is our home page all we're sending is this ugly homepage.html simple so let's go ahead and try to benchmark this and try to firstly run our first kind of command so let me just put all of these terminals on the top in here for you guys to see exactly what i'm doing i try to like zoom in a little bit for you guys to see what's happening so for this benchmark so let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger because we don't need much space from that side anywhere okay so i'm gonna clear that and i'm gonna use in the auto canon so the auto canon here is a cli but it can be installed using npm that's what i like about it it's actually configurable and can be installed globally or locally in here using npm i do it both i install them both whenever i need it so i can use it so you can go through this by doing npm install uh, auto canon and make sure to do that the dash g which is going to be installing it for you globally and make sure to also install it as save dev where you're gonna install it as a development dependency only because you don't need this on a production ready server so only development only and it's gonna be installing it on here because later on I'm gonna be using this as a programmatic approach you're gonna create a custom benchmark file that uses this module to do some HTTP benchmarking and stress testing simple okay so that's what we need uh, pretty simple in that particular part I already did install both of them all the projects and globally now let's go ahead and use the cli first to go ahead and do some benchmarking on the uh on the ccp so if we go through help there's a plenty of stuff and this pretty much are pretty self-explanatory now the option going to be needed is actually the connections we're going to tell it oh we need for example 10 clients which are going to represent something like 10 http clients like 10 browsers or 10 i don't know just like regular users some of them use i don't know uh, mobile browsers some of them uses chrome anywhere but it only means in here just like 10 http clients and those are going to be concurrent imagine those are like there's 10 people are connected to your web server are connected to your website viewing reading your blog or something like this real time and they are concurrent at the same time sweet so this is the connection is what it means uh we don't need pipelining we need duration so this is like the number of seconds to run the auto canon it has default of 10 so number of seconds pretty much the higher the second it is the auto canon will be able to send more and more HTTP requests because uh this is pretty much not having some max requests per client so clients can pretty much send 10k requests per each client it depends but of course you can control that value here and there and you can say oh 
a per client please send me like 10 requests per single client that's going to make it 10.10 .10 is 100 so 100 requests in in total if that if that makes sense for you so this is the amount like the amounts make before exceeding benchmark so like a, a minimum amount and there's like the maximum amounts like if you take a look um the maximum connection request like per connection or the overall request so there's a plenty of stuff and it's pretty configurable pretty lightweight I do love it so let's gonna try to run our first thing so I'm gonna do auto canon and I'm gonna do my first thing so the first thing in here I need um, let's say I want to just like 10 connections pretty basic now for 10 connections what I need to go ahead and do um, I'm gonna go ahead and try something like a duration I'm gonna say 10 seconds okay I'm gonna use a lot of 10 seconds because we don't have much time on this video but of course you can run this for minutes hours whatever and you can do much more advanced and kind of stressful benchmarking on your web servers by yourself of course so we're gonna do uh, 10 seconds in here and last but not least we need to provide the URL so the URL I want to benchmark is the HTTP and make sure to provide the HTTP protocol because sometimes it doesn't work without it and I'm gonna say localhost on port 5000 okay click enter so you see the server is already accepting tons of requests and they are all 200 which means successful requests and you get this really awesome progress bar that shows you what's going on boom finished now if you take a look on this there is some stats which is about latency and about the request per second and the bytes received and and cents per second so take a look on the overall here it says 50k requests in 10.04 seconds and 55 megabytes are read and which means 55 megabytes are transferred between the clients the the 10 clients and the actual server we got and the 50k request is huge like 15k or pretty much like 10 e users are concurrent and they are all in general made 15k requests to the server and if you take a look on pretty much uh, the overall here what's going on there's tons of them so you take a look on the latency it takes like less than 100 or 1 millisecond for 2.5 per style uh, and it takes like 45 millisecond of 99 percent if this is what you want mainly what you're going to be looking for is actually the average because it does the median it just like calculates the the average one for you so this is what you want and you want to like take a look on the maximum so the maximum 68 millisecond and six seconds per millisecond of course this is not fair for the latency because you are running it on the local host both the server and the clients on the local host so this doesn't real make it as a real word but still latency makes it really good and you can take a look on the benchmark of latency because latency can help a lot especially if you're running concurrent connections all together and concurrent connection can make the latency go really really high and too bad so you can take a look what is going on now for the request per second we got 901 and like 15 46 by 15 percent per style so 15 percent of the connections made like 15 46 which means like five connections or something if, if we do the math right and on average there is a 15k um or i just like 1500 sorry so there's a 1500 request per second made us uh in general on, on the server so in general there's a 15k on 10 seconds so if you increase this 10 seconds you're gonna find a lot and this is actually doing it really good if you take a look what's going on in here of course sometimes you get some higher latency but most of the time the latency is pretty good and remember those are concurrent connections they are just 10 and they are all green all successful HTTP requests pretty sweet now let's go ahead and level up the bar a little bit and let's go from 10 to 1000 okay so 1k um yeah i'm spelling 1k right if you click enter it's gonna run for another uh 10 seconds and we're still seriously now if you take a look the latency is much higher than before because we got 1000 concurrent users sweet now if you take a look on this there is 23k requests made in 10 seconds and there is pr pretty much no missed or timeouts no errors so they all delivered successfully and there's pretty pretty great the latency as you see it's quite bigger and here it reached out like a one second and a half almost which is you know kind of like happens when you have a thousand concurrent users and overall just like for your own attention and for your own notice that's this this is what's going on running right now it's actually there is 
different kind of like constraints and different um, environment variables actually are controlling the server latency and how the benchmark does because currently we're running it on my own local machine which is kind of like uh, an i5 4 core and it has like 16 gigs of ram but there's still plenty of application are running the recorder is running and plenty of plenty of stuff to take care of consideration because this is not going to be a real one to make benchmarks look much more realistic and much better for you to like transparently you can run these benchmarks on an isolated server like on your own server and see it how does it do on a server for example on tone core server with eight gigs of ram or four gigs of ram or whatever server is going to be ending up like running the application on and see how does it do so if that makes sense this is what i'm doing right here and it's clear to see for 1000 it's passing really well and it's doing it pretty great now let's go back into my main question for the video or like the two main questions how can Node.js or does Node.js handle 10K concurrent requests in our local machine in here? Let's go and figure this out. So if we go back uh, to up, I love going up into the previous command using Linux. So if we go ahead and add one zero, which is making it 10K concurrent requests. So let me just make this a little bit bigger for you guys to see what's going on. So as you see here, there is a 10K kind of request or I make this like that. I don't know. Okay, so I try to make it like this. Uh, it would be better. So 10k requests, we're gonna have it 10 seconds. I'm gonna say send this 10k request uh, into the server. So they're gonna run this. As we see, the, just the startup took quite some time and the latency is going mad. Um, it went from like above two, six, six, like more than two seconds. And there you go. So the server stacks still have some, some lag here. But if you take a look down here, there's 18k requests made and there's a 2k timeout, like 2k errors, which is just basically 2k server timeout. And what a timeout means is actually when a server having tons of requests made down to the server and the server can't allo allocate pretty much neither the RAM resources or the, the processing resources to pretty much hold this request and get them back to the actual client in the right time. That's why what a timeout has. Of course, an HTTP timeout uh, could be ideally like, I don't know, something like um, two seconds or something like this, or maybe 10 seconds or something like this. But it's say, oh, for example, like in five seconds, we didn't receive that kind of request. That's why the timeout happens. And timeouts are actually pretty, pretty crucial. And they are pretty common among a lot of servers. As you see here, from an 18K perspective, with a 10,000 concurrent connections for Node.js. And remember, we are running this on my own local development machine. It's pretty much doing pretty great. This is not bad overall when it comes to running this much of concurrence overload on the server. Since it's not dedicated server to do tests or since it has a lot of apps running alongside of that and the benchmark is running on the same machine. Amazing, it's, it's actually doing pretty great. That's not bad at all. 2K timeout is pretty decent, and we're gonna test or retest this on a real world server that I've gotten here, which is kind of like um, a host in a bot with two core CPUs and two gigs of RAM. I'm gonna see how does that do uh, in general. The server is not gonna have any other startups gonna run in, so this is gonna be a perfect example and a perfect way to benchmark it. Sweet, so as you can see, we've got a really, really awesome ways to do all of these benchmarks. Now, what we can do also, and we can go back to our main question, is run it on a million requests and see how does that do. So a million has in six zeros, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not wrong and I'm not blind either. So I can go ahead and run this million concurrent requests and see what it does. As clear as in here, it's already kind of like breaking everything. It's not actually even running because I run this one million requests. We need to actually go ahead and like wait for this a little bit to see that this is actually gonna be running fine. I'm not sure if this is not gonna even run on my own local machine in here. If it doesn't, I'm gonna just take it up one level and we're gonna test it on my own custom made out server. And boom, the magic happened. There is actually a, a stack trace error in here, which is basically like an error in allocating memory. So it's out of memory, it's out of RAM. You can't allocate the memory like the, the clients needed to send the request. 
So my machine is not powerful enough. You probably need like a 32 gigs of RAM to do that, to do all this magic, all of it together. So I'm gonna rerun this on my own custom server, which is kind of empty. It's not having any kind of like uh, other application running around or something, but I'm not really sure if this is also gonna hold up uh, the whole benchmark. If it's not gonna happen, we're gonna first, or we can go ahead and run the benchmarks from here to our server and see what all it does, if that is even possible. But in general, one million requests, is, is kind of crazy, right? It's not like even gonna be doable in kind of like a lot of stuff. And one million request is kind of like scale of Google, or scale of Facebook or Twitter. So you have to put that in consideration. If you're having this much of users, you need to like buy thousands of dollars of different servers and resources to have this much of concurrent requests. Now, the current way we're actually doing benchmarks, it's not really that practical and it's kind of like really bad. It's like amateurs doing benchmarks. We don't want that. We are advanced users and we want our benchmarks actually saved, controlled, and they all have it like this programmatic approach where we have it on files and whenever we need the benchmark running, we can just like do it in npm script, click enter, and boom, the benchmark is going to be running. So let's go ahead and move this from command line into a programmatic approach and create a specific files for doing the benchmark for us using the auto cannon, um module so let's just go back here and inside of like the src or uh, i would rather just put it outside the src because it's nothing doing with the src so i'm going to create a folder called benchmarks and this one is going to have in all the benchmarks we're going to be having benchmarks are basically going to be scripts that you run each script does a different benchmark than the other so let's say we want to do some basic get.js which is a basic get benchmark as you do is like 10k concurrent request or something. So let's go ahead and do this using the auto canon. So first things first, import the auto canon and I'm gonna do um, the auto canon. All right, now the second thing here, we're gonna have like specific functions to start and stop and, and evaluate the, the pretty much the benchmark. So I'm gonna call this start bench, all right? So this start bench in here is gonna tell you how to start the benchmark. We're gonna have a specific URL of where we wanna run or when or pretty much sorry, or like where we wanna run the benchmark, like the target server URL. So for this one, I'm gonna have HTTP. Of course, you can run this with HTTPS and H, like auto in here has a plenty of support for this and it does, it does a pretty great job of supporting that. Uh, I'm gonna use some process environment variables. So I need to go ahead and use require and do uh, .env .config because we're gonna be needing, and I wanted to access the env file in here and grab the port from it. So all it goes smooth and nice. So I'm gonna do env and grab you the port of the server. And so, or if this doesn't exist, just run it by default on 5000. Okay, pretty sweet. Now, another one I want is actually to have some arguments. So I want, whenever I wanna run, run this script, I wanna have like some arguments provided to the script. So for example, I want the script to be more like a um, kind of like dynamic script rather than just a static one. So I can provide it, for example, say, I wanna run 10 concurrent connections or 10,000 or 1 million. So I don't need to go ahead and like rechange the script every single time. So to do so, I'm gonna have some arguments in here. I'm gonna use some process, uh, or pretty much Node.js kind of power, and then you use the argument v in here, I'm gonna slice, because the two first on the array are like more specific to the to the actual program name and, and this kind of stuff, low level. So I wanna start from two, I wanna get uh, pretty much this argument. For example, the first argument I wanna expect is actually the number of connections. So let's say the number of connections is gonna be like uh, the first argument, or it's gonna default to something like a thousand, all right? Next, what I want is actually the max connections uh, per pretty much a kind of like a single client, if that, that makes sense. So just like max connections per client or I'd say max request per single connection, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna do max connection requests. I'm gonna do args one or, um, or I would say go ahead and do me 10 or um, go ahead and do me a thousand or something. Like a thousand per thousand, if that's uh, that's the default one. Now let's go ahead and do the actual instance. So I'm gonna create an instance of Orcanon, which is just a function that takes some couple of options. 
Now, AutoCanyon takes an URL, so we need to provide it with the URL we have there. Uh, the connections in here, like the number of connections, we're going to have provided with a number of connections, and for example, the duration. So let's say we're going to always sample on a 10 second duration and see how it does. And if that makes sense as well, I'm going to do like max connections. I'm going to use the same one on top there. Then I'm going to have like common headers between all of this. And the common header I want to provide is actually the content uh, type. I want to just like provide the content type to application JSON because basically our server or our API uh, accepts application JSONs and handle them properly. So that's what we need to provide in here or throughout the client. And the rest of the stuff I want is actually the request. So the request in here, um, you can provide a different type of request. So it's an array and it takes like different type of requests on an object shape that tells it like every single request, how does it do it? For example, the first request I want, the first and the only, I want the method to be get, which is of course an HTTP request. And I want the path to be uh, the homepage. So I want to just like do a get request on the homepage. That's it. If you want to run another request, which is going to happen like one after the other. So you're going to first like on a get, then for example, run another request on a different path on the server or something like this and do multi requests, like kind of like benchmarking on your server. All right. Pretty sweet. So that should be pretty great for our first. And the actual last thing in here, we need to provide it with a callback that either says, oh, there is an error happened or just like a finished callback say, oh, you finished the benchmark. Here are the status and the results. So for this, I want to create another function, which is I'm going to do, for example, uh, just a closure, of course, I'm going to do finished bench. And first it takes the error. The second it takes like the result from that. And all I'm going to do like console log is say um, finished benchmark and I want to just like go in and do error if there is any or the actual results we've got and we need to provide it through this way I need to provide the callback right over there now of course we can track this and we can provide the same way as the auto canyon CLI does for us where you just like provide us with really awesome kind of like progress bar it tells us oh wait it's actually 20% or 30% or whatever. So I can go in and do the auto canyon, the track method, and I can provide it with the instance. And this should do the tracking for us perfectly on our STD out or our console, of course. And last but not least, all we have to go in and do is actually call start bench, and that should make it all go right. Now let's go on and try to run this benchmark real quickly and see how it does. So I'm gonna do node, go benchmarks, then go to basic git.js. And of course, you can provide it with whatever kind of variables we want. The first one is the number of connections. So let's say it wants, um, I want to like a 10k connections. And each one, like each e user is allowed to make only 10 connections as max. Click enter. And this should actually run. We got the progress bar, which is pretty sweet. We've got a 10,000 connections. And the lady says, Chris, it's going mad. Uh, over there, so just wait a couple of seconds, and there you go. And as you in here right now, we got the tables as we did before, but we got a much better one. We got a really, really good ones like where you got uh, some title, like some deeper kind of advanced log, like a verbose based log in here, and to see everything going on behind the scenes, like the connections, the duration, and what type of requests you got. For example, if you got a response of like 400 HTTP response, which is kind of a basic error or a 500 of an internal server, it's gonna log it in here. So it says, oh, you got, for example, three 500 internal servers as a response. But no, we didn't get all of this. We got only the successful one from 2XX, which is stands for the 200 HTTP status code. Uh, status code in here, the count of it, which is the same count of all requests made. And of course, the latency in here, and we got like the request, the average, the mean, uh, the min and max, the total, and all that sort of stuff. And throughout, throughout, put if you want this, like uh, the, the whole kind of bandwidth and all the stuff uh, going on behind the scenes. And if you notice, before when we did the 10K request kind of benchmark, it didn't work out. Why? Because each kind of connection will send in like no maximum. It will send you, for example, each connection will send in 10K in other requests which is huge. But right now, since every single user is just not doing 10 connections per second, that's actually working. Node.js can handle 10K per 10 connections for a single user, for a single concurrent user. That's actually working. 
and it has 20k of requests if that makes sense if you do the math you're gonna find it right but yeah still that's actually working it's not allocating a lot of ram or that th something from that sort pretty sweet now let's go ahead and have a different script that's gonna do a couple of different stuff behind the scenes and see how that does now the second script i wanted to actually go ahead and use to benchmark the registration process for the actual users so here's in here there's this handler for registering a user go ahead and check the user's data uh, go ahead and validate if a user exists before or not then eventually save it to the database and eventually return a response to the user as clearly see the paradigm is quite uh, a lot happening behind the scenes in there and it's actually evolving some database access so there is some database threads that are being running uh, it's saving to the database checking with the database and all sorts of stuff so i want to benchmark and see how that does in a real world kind of scenario so we can use it with autocannon or autocannon sorry to go ahead and benchmark that from that perspective so i'm going to go ahead and create a new script i'm going to copy this and i'm going to just go ahead and do um, let's say I want to name this login register.js. And for this one, I'm going to just copy paste the script. It's going to be pretty much the same. Not much of like differences happening behind the scenes in here. The only difference you want is actually on the request. So on the request in here, I want to send a post request. And I want to send a request to like API v1 and go to register. And the different stuff I wanted to send in here, there's actually um, a particular property that overrides the actual request uh, script or pretty much the request kind of payload before sending it on AutoCanon. So we can use like the setup uh, request in here, which is gonna take a function. And this function, what it does is gonna have like, uh, it's gonna provide it with the request that's gonna be sent out so you can manipulate the request and return it as an object. So we can go in and do like return via request and you can do whatever stuff that goes to the request. For example, you can do like request.body and you can say whatever custom body in here. Of course, this is gonna allow us to do a dynamic one. And in this case, what I want more particularly is actually to go ahead and send, uh, like I have got a list of different random users from full name of users, emails and passwords they are all random and it got like a 10k list of that users and what i want i want to go ahead and run or pretty much read this json random data of users and send it to the server and it where is is kind of a user is going to have a random data and try to benchmark it this way so it's good to do it this way in a pretty simple manner i already got this kind of like a user to json and generated it using some really awesome uh, kind of like website to do that generation. So I'm gonna copy paste it right here. I'm gonna name this, for example, user.json, and I got a 10k data. It's it's all kind of generated uh, randomly with passwords and emails and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's that's all working absolutely fine. All right. So let me just gonna close this one, and I can go ahead and read through this and actually grab every single time a new user. So I want to create a new kind of like variable in here to hold the instance of, and I'm going to say like, for example, the current request number, and it's going to start from zero. Now I'm going to console log, let's say uh, the current request number. Okay, sorry, can't type. And I'm going to do um, request number, and plus one because it's not from zero, so I want to start from from one basically and here I want to append to the request.body so every single time I'm going to go ahead and say oh I'm going to use a string you find here because the JSON body in here for the autocannon has to be a string it can be a regular JSON body no it has to be a string and I'm going to just like do go ahead and import the users JSON so I'm going to do a users data equals require and I'm going to actually do require a users.json and I do really love about JSONs is actually you can import them directly into Node.js and you can read the files without no further processing or, or loading or stuff like that. So I'm gonna do users.data and I can go through the request number and here I can access it every single time. So that means the request number is gonna be incrementally increments every single time, like every, for every single connection, for every single request, there will be like this number incremented. So what we need is a request number plus plus. So every single request is gonna find a new data from this user.json, it's gonna grab a new kind of like user and it's gonna send this data, which has a full name, 
email and a password Let's take a look in here so full name uh, email and a password they all random I'm gonna register this all random users to the database throughout the API and of course in real time I'm gonna benchmark all of that and see how that does in a really really good way pretty sweet right so that's that's all the benchmark what we need and that's simply what we need for doing this uh, using that particular benchmark so all we need to go ahead and do right now is actually going to run the actual benchmark so let me just take this up and what I need more particularly is actually to run this script um, the actual login register script which basically is gonna register us you know as many users as we want because we've got all of these variables here with max connections and everything so what I'm telling it is I should go ahead and use the user JSON, which has 10k uh, different random users data. I'm gonna use all of this 10k to send 10k requests, like create 10k concurrent users. Each one is gonna send by itself one kind of request and see how that does. I know 10k for registering on this and a website, even Facebook doesn't have that. It's it's kind of ridiculous, but we're gonna just like push it to the limits and see how it does. Of course, the result is not gonna say no juice is bad or something. Pretty sure it's not gonna do it really well. I would be first surprised if it does, but still, Node.js kind of like handles it really well, and it all depends on the server and the resources available. So if you got like the next quantum PC running um, Node.js, yes, you're gonna have it all worked out really well. So it all depends on your processor, your RAM, uh, the network, and plenty, plenty of stuff going on behind the scenes to make it work as expected to be. All right, so let's go and run this. I'm gonna do node benchmarks again and i'm gonna go to login register i'm um, gonna go dot js i'm gonna say i want to have 10k and for every single user i want to send only single request that makes sense right because a single user needs to register once and validate that throughout the register api so if i click enter run all of this can you see there's it's gonna go up to the 10k first prepares all of that it's gonna send and then here I have got this my server like having all the data console logs and it gets all of these console logs and sometimes the post request comes back and forth it's ridiculous right so I'm not sure if this is even gonna work or not uh, there's still st a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes there I'm pretty sure like the server even got stuck or we haven't got a uh, kind of like a response from the server so there is tons of them actually sent out but um, errors 10k there's 10k type of errors going on and I guess I know why because I got some introduction to console logs which makes it somehow bad on how it runs so let me just get rid of this console log here for the data and maybe there is a console log um, Okay, this error we don't need it, and I don't know what I'm what I'm having another console log here. No index, I don't really remember, but I think that should make it look good. Screw it, it's kind of like failing here. Some have having some timeouts, plenty of stuff going on, so it's not doing it great. Ten concurrent connection is too much, and it's too much for my own machine here to actually handle it it's it's kind of crazy and it won't be able to do it so what I want to go ahead and retry and do it again is actually just try like 1k or 2k and see how it does so let's go and run the server again so npm run starts I know this doesn't seem really good but still we got the npm script started the server is actually started and if I go back to the login register one and I just get this all the way up here and run the brush mark again so I am gonna go to um, okay so basic get I'm gonna go for example login register.js I'm gonna run 10k each one is gonna send a single request so I'm gonna just like register 1000 user like 1k users on the server and see what it does behind the scenes on that particular perspective all right so I'm gonna run this 1k uh, we got this all this running as clearly the API is already returning 200 so it's much better than running 10k of course because 10k is a ridiculous number when it comes to registering especially for my machine in here so if we take a look on the stats for the 200s we got only 268 being handled and responded back that's mainly because of timeout and if you take a look on 
Um, basically, if you take a look on the request, there is uh, latency. The latency is, is pretty huge. If you take a look on our tables in here, security latency is more like a 10 seconds in the max. So that's that's a ridiculous number. And uh, here for the average, it's not really the big of a deal because it doesn't take much of RAM because it's all dedicated to a database kind of threads to take care of it. So for the, what is that? So the request, there is a minimum and max for each user and how that does. Uh, the total request made out to 68. And if you take a look, this errors, there's tons of errors in here, but we haven't got back any kind of like 400. So they are mainly all like the rest 300 or, you know, 300 and, and I would say, um, like 40 or something requests exclusive for the errors in here, 700, sorry. So all of these requests are timeouts. So this timeouts is the same number of errors. So all of those are time off on the server. So the server didn't make it to respond back in time uh, for the user. So if you increase the timeout in here for the HTTP, we will probably be able to actually find a good amount of like way to do it. But I would love to actually benchmark it this way and see what it does. And it actually compares to my machine and how it's running. 268 request for registering user, concurrent connections, 1K concurrent connections, that's pretty great. That's that's a decent number and the server can handle it really well. We will test this again on our server in a second and see how it does in, in a much better way and actually see the real, real world kind of test that we are waiting for. Now here I got an SSH tunnel going through to my custom dedicated server. So this is a completely virtual private server hosted somewhere and this has two core CPUs. In general, if, you, if you're looking for like the, the specs of this, it has like five gigahertz, almost five gigahertz of CPU on this. And what's going on behind the scenes as well, there's two gigabytes of RAM. So that's all you need to worry about. There's there's actually like 60 or 70 gigs of disk, sp disk space, which you don't need to worry about. The only two factors mostly you need to worry about when Node.js come in, and especially for the API and the kind of approach we're using our server, just like doing requests back and forth and using database and all sorts of stuff. So you should only be caring about the processor and how much RAM you've got on the server. So I've got two instances running here and there, uh, just to be able to assess what is going on behind the scenes. So there's actually both these instances are connected to that using SSH and everything working fine. Now, what I did go ahead is actually git clone the same projects I got in here. I cloned it into the server so we can run it and install npm and install all sorts of stuff. Uh, even AutoCAD in here got it installed. So we can go ahead and start benchmarking and see what it does behind the scenes and see how it actually goes and works. So I've tried to go in and do an ls. Actually, I'm already on the, the server. It's called the Express server. And as clearly see, we got all the files we need and all the connections. Now, the only thing is running on this server. There's nothing else running but the Docker uh, and, and the Docker MySQL container for actually being able to connect with our server and being like the host for our MySQL. So, like Docker, PS, take a look in here. There's only MySQL running on port 3306. Uh, for TCP and you know it's been it's been run out for like two hours or something but that's all it's running on this server just like for your information if you uh, processes there's this is much of processes running here like bot shell and bash and, and just that basic stuff in here so that's all you're running on this particular server in here so there isn't much of overhead on the processor itself plus there isn't much of an overhead on the actual RAM. So there's like almost two gigabytes of RAM are available for us and we can go ahead and start testing all of this and see a real world server, how does it do with this much of concurrent requests on our Node.js application in this particular site. So let's go ahead and do this. And first I need to go ahead and start the actual server and see what it does behind the scenes. So if you do npm run start, and this should start our service. Clearly, see the service started. It's listening on port 5000, and it's actually connection has been established successfully with our MySQL MirrorDB uh, database server that's running on Docker. Pretty sweet, right? Now we are actually ready to start the benchmark. So that's why I actually created a new session, and here I can go in and start the benchmark, and I can do it from the benchmarks folder. So I can do npm or node. Sorry, I can go and start a benchmarks. And it can do um, what it's called. Uh, it's called basic git. Okay, so basic dash git.js, 
And here, let's say I want to go ahead and do a uh, thousand K kind of like, uh, or just like one K connections and each one can send another one K like each kind of connection can send another one K and see how that how that does. So click enter, we got this really awesome progress bar. Uh, it's doing it, it's testing in a 10 seconds, you know, kind of like duration in here or timestamp. And uh, we can take a look on how that is doing. So if you take a look in here for the request per second, that's all looking good for the RAM e usage and the bytes actually being sent out back and forth. That's good to you. Uh, take a look pipeline in and the 200 X's are two thou or 12,948, which is pretty great. So that's the, the amount of like how much we have received. And if you take a look, the average request. So that's it. That's, that's all the requests that have been made out. And that's pretty much all the requests that we have actually received back as 200. So that's, that's pretty great actually on, on this particular side. There's no timeouts, no errors. So we, we are in the good spots and clearly see our server in here did handle that with a 13k of requests uh, from 1000 concurrent connections and 1000 requests per connection. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, now let's go to level up a little bit the stress test and I'm gonna go do 10k or I'm gonna do 10k connections in here and just leave you with a 1000 connection. So 10k concurrent, like 10k concurrent active connections on our server and doing the benchmark here and there to see how that does. So that's gonna be running. Uh, it's gonna run 40 seconds, 15, okay, uh, or percent, sorry, not seconds. And there you go. So we got this average. If we take a look on the average in here, I'm gonna take a look on the 200 axes. They are all hundreds, but still we got almost like 4,000 errors and 4,400 timeouts which they are all of course timeouts so the server didn't sufficiently make it all there's actually 4000 people like 4000 requests for example you can imagine yourself uh, if you do that right the math let's say that's going to be like 2000 people or something who made out this request in this time and didn't get a response because it was timing out from the server and that's basically because the server is not power enough and yes, that's it because the server is not power enough. And this server is only two core processor. Can you imagine? It's a two core processor, not even that much. And of course, a two core processor with a two gigabyte of RAM. It's just a two gigabyte of RAM cannot handle this much of traffic or an OGS application. But still, that much of overload, 10K concurrent requests and connections. And that's still no just, it's doing pretty great job in terms of latency. I see it. Well, actually pretty great in here when it comes uh, to the maximum here it's almost 10 seconds I would I would say um, that's that's pretty decent that's kind of like average in my understanding in here because we are in a situation we're not gonna say this is gonna take you all good all the time yes still no GS is not perfect but still does it really good and it depends on your servers and how you handle them properly and what kind of resources you provide like how much RAM how much processors if you got like different servers if you got them with cluster technology from node.js and different different kind of like aspects on how that works and how does it make it look better in this particular sense now if you want to test the 1 million concurrent request just don't even try it because it will fail and i'm pretty sure since a 10k failed with a 4000 kind of like it's almost average so there's tons of timeouts happening in middle there so there isn't much of going on with it, 1 million. It won't be able even to allocate this because a 1 million concurrent connections is quite huge. You need a lot of resources to do that test, especially with HTTP and running this on the same server and all that sort of stuff. So I would rather, if you, if you got this right, yes, you can test it with 1 million, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually care a lot about 1 million concurrent requests because that's always not going to be handled by Node.js. And it all, as I said before, it all depends on your server resources, like RAM and processors and all that sort of stuff, and, and how much better your code is, or how good your code is, and how API handlings, and a lot of factors goes into the, actually how you created the application and the code base and all these kind of factors. Sweet. Now, the other kind of benchmark we need to run is the login register benchmark. So for that I'm running this, I'm gonna go ahead and do node uh, benchmarks 
I'm gonna do login dash register and I want to do the same thing I want to run only 1k uh, request and see what it does and every single one sends a single one or sends a single request and it does register with our word list so I was gonna try this out uh, we can run this there is like 1000 they are prepared they're gonna run this on a 10 seconds kind of um, you know approval and there you go we got a thousand which is sweet right we got a thousand registration requests and a thousand of them all of them basically have been successfully uh, went through so that that did a really good job I'm kind of surprised because this is actually said before a dedicated server it doesn't have much of overhead that's why it works really really well even for the latency if you take a look in here the latency is like kind of good it, it's kind of decent if I say the max is four seconds for waiting for registration I know a lot of servers does way much worse than that so yes it depends on the server and depends on the code base but a 1k that's kind of doing it pretty great so let me just go and try to push it harder and let's try with a 10k all right I'm gonna try with a 10k and just say I'm pretty sure this will fail brutally because we got 1,000 kind of users already registered. So most of them are gonna be failing and say, uh, for more like kind of code logic, say, oh, this user already exists in our database. You can register them back. So it's gonna fail with some errors in here. So we got 773 um, kind of failed in here, and and most of them kind of failed mainly because of that. And the rest are gonna be timeouts because we didn't put them actually really well so that's why so like 773 actually passed through and the rest are not so that's kind of a brutal way to actually test it because it's not really well so you have to go ahead and empty the database and all sort of stuff to go ahead and test it but that should be actually fair enough for you guys to see how actually Node.js can handle this kind of request and like how you can pretty much benchmark it so hope you guys actually learned how to create benchmarks how to use auto caning to benchmark your HTTP kind of Node.js service most likely helps you got pretty much an understanding how event loop works for Node.js in a basic sense if that makes sense hopefully and the other thing is actually hopefully you've got some decent knowledge of how Node.js works how does it handle requests how does database kind of like included API does work uh, how does it like a normal get HTML file or landing home page uh, kind of thing it works with benchmarking and sending 10k to 1 million requests works even though 1 million doesn't really work and you need a lot much more resources to do that but still 10k is, is a ridiculous number and you probably got the point of whole of how the kind of this stuff uh, actually working behind the scenes so yeah like for from my kind of perspective and my own opinion on what nodejs can be used for there's a plenty of things that can be used for and plenty of things that cannot be used for and one of the things that Node.js cannot be used for that's gonna like test it real quick in here is the Fibonacci uh, form so or what's more generally if I want to say in here is processing kind of heavy uh, operations Node.js is not a processor friendly right because it runs in a single thread and it does delegate to other threads to take care of you know other kind of like events and event loops and and kind of like different threads for taking care for example for database connections and reading and writing to the database and all that sort of stuff but still for processing heavy kind of operations like the Fibonacci calculations it will go wrong and don't even try it but it could be handled right because if you got a really good server and you can use Node.js to delegate and create a child process or even child threads and make them run through this and not blocking the actual event loop like the main event loop that will be really good but if we try to go and use this Fibonacci in here if I go to the to the actual uh, home page in here and I need I can go ahead into the uh, server this so let me just um, go to calculate and I need to go API v1 calculate all right sorry so I think I already I already got that so if I try API v1 calculate with one, we got already the answer is one. So that's pretty simple, right? If we try it with three, we got the answer two, four, and it starts going up and up. And those all are pretty quick, right? If we do this answer exclusively, it's pretty great. If we go like 10, the number would start to increase uh, 13. That's still pretty great. 16, if we try it with 20, exclusively now it took a little bit of time right 23 yes it did 
26. Um, let's level it up a little bit and go like 40. And that where magic happens. Seriously, the server settled for some time and it still does if we try to do that. It, it probably took like a second or something to come back with this. If we try even 44, the server is gonna take much, much more time in like um, O log N, which is a complexity of the Fibonacci algorithm. And now the server is actually stalled. If another user tries to do the request, in the meantime, this is doing kind of like, um, you know, calculation of this, the user won't get the homepage. Basically why? Because the event loop is being kind of like settled on, on actually calculating the Fibonacci. Because this event, the main thread for your Node.js application is being taken care of a different operation that doesn't make sense, it should do, and it's taking care of the Fibonacci. So it can't do any handle kind of all the requests. Pretty bad. But the solution to this, to use it with Node.js, what you can simply do is actually whenever you get this Fibonacci request, you can create a custom child process or a custom thread. I would prefer a child or a fork a child process more particularly and for this process delegate it and say oh you got this Fibonacci number go ahead and figure it out if you got a timeout or something please come back with me or to me sorry with an event saying oh you can't do it in the right time or something like this and I will tell the user I tell him oh you can't do this Fibonacci it's too big or here's the answer it's being done for you pretty sweet while still the event loop is free taking requests from different users and that's the point of Node.js and that's how it should be used. So actually good or bad approaches make it go good or bad depending on how good you are or how code, uh, pretty much how better coder, how better programmer you are in this particular perspective. So if we try now right now to run this request again and in, I can go in and do localhost 5000, this should get me the, the home page in here which is pretty big but doesn't matter. So if we try to run this number, which is gonna take a couple of seconds as we did before, and I try to go to the home page. Imagine I'm another user, try to go to the home page. That still settles. If I try to go to the home page from a different size, I mean that did finish, right? Uh, I can run this again and I can go localhost 5000. Seriously, the home page won't arrive at me. It, it just like won't show me the home page till this finishes because the event loop is being taken. Seriously, as soon as that, as soon as it does finish, we got the homepage. Pretty bad and pretty good. So you have to use it really well in order to know how to do that and how to do like heavy calculations. And the actual ways or what kind of like different kind of like scenarios or applications Node.js can be used on, there's plenty of stuff where like sockets or websites can be used like chat applications, uh, I would say like different APIs for exposing databases or queued inputs. Uh, data streaming, like if you see Netflix uses that a lot for data encoding and data streaming and all that sort of stuff, but it does it really good, so it handles it to other processes, and it does it in a really good like, kind of clusters and different servers and all that sort of stuff. There's proxies, uh, like dashboard or monitoring systems, um, like applications and different stuff, like server-side rendering, all that sort of stuff, but where Node.js cannot be used, so you should completely if you avoid Node.js, and different applications when it comes, for example, uh, hair server-side computations, as we said before, uh, Fibonacci in here, but it could be done in a better way and in a much better way. But I think that should, that should make it actually a conclusion for you guys on how Node.js works and how you should be using it in a perfect way and how you should use all of these like event loop kind of like single threaded powers in your side, but not against you. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you guys liked this benchmarking. Hope you guys enjoyed going through all of these kind of bits and details about how Node.js works, the event loop, benchmarking with the 10K, auto caning, creating all these kind of scripts. Hope you are actually satisfied with this and hope you like this video. So if you like this type of videos so of doing benchmarks and going out of the box or of the usual videos that you make, yeah, let me know. I would love to make more videos like this. That would be, that would be amazing for me. I love actually exploring the limits and pushing out of the limits of different technologies, Node.js, you can go with Python, C++, and you can try different frameworks and see how it does of pushing their limits. So thank you guys for watching this before. Hope you guys all enjoyed it and see you all hopefully in the next ones.